Welcome back to Seasons, a devotional based on my book. Just look at the link up there if you want to know what this series is about. And today, I'm going to talk about my frustration. No matter how hard I try, how often do we actually say those words? Well, I have to admit that I find it increasingly frustrating when I'm not able to clean up behind myself. I drop things, things get stained, and it's really difficult or almost impossible for me to get rid of some of those deep stains that land on your counter when you spill tea or coffee and that kind of stuff. And so, just to pretend that it doesn't exist, I'll put an artfully placed toaster over the stain, or I just won't go into the kitchen at all. Avoidance is the best policy after all. But every time that I know my house cleaner is coming, I will be cleaning up the night before, tidying up as much as I can to make a good impression on her. She's a really good friend, so I don't really need to impress her much, but I do it every time she comes. And by the time she gets here, I'm exhausted and things still need to be cleaned. Exhaustion soon turns to amusement at my own foolishness as I watch those stained counters become sparkling clean with a few firm wipes of her cleaning cloth and the bathtub grout returns to pristine white by a light scrubbing. I am also unable to erase the stain of sin in my life. No amount of good intentions will remove them. I can't hide my guilt under a camouflage of good works either. There's no such thing as a spiritual toaster I can put on a stain to hide it. There are dark corners of my heart that are perfect hiding spots for sin and for lies that I am believing from the enemy. And try as I might, I can't even see them most of the time no matter try to remove them. No, I need the Savior's touch. I love this quote by Max Licato. I'm probably butchering his last name. I read his books, but I've never heard his name pronounced. Max writes this about Jesus. Our Savior kneels down and gazes upon the darkest areas of our lives. But rather than recoil in horror, he reaches out in kindness and says, I can clean that if you want. And from the basin of his grace, he scoops up a palm full of mercy and washes away our sin. I think I'll take my Savior up on his invitation. What about you? Are there areas in your life that are stained and filthy? Are there doors of your heart that you prefer to keep firmly shut because you know the mess that hides behind those doors? Will you allow the Lord to come and pour his forgiveness, grace, and healing into those very areas that have caused you so much guilt and shame? We're new creatures when we surrender our lives to Jesus. So the old man is dead and in God's eyes, those really sinful areas of our heart from our past are wiped clean. And our new identity in Christ is not as a sinner anymore, but we do occasionally sin. And more times than not, we buy into the lie of the enemy that our past is something that we need to hide or to be afraid of. Quite often what's lying behind that guilt and shame, that's false guilt and false shame, is a frightened child who's afraid they're going to get punished for something that their father has long since forgotten. Behind those doors that we think we can't open because we feel ashamed, there's also a bunch of lies we have been believing 
about ourselves that's affecting our lives now as a new creation. Bring those to the Lord. Allow him to sort through it. Don't be afraid that he is going to shame you or expose you or punish you for the things that have already been dealt with at the cross.